There are cards right now that are ridiculously cheap. So cheap that it would be dumb not to buy them. These cards will go up in price whether I say they'll go up in price or not. So when they go up in price, do me a favor. Let me know. What's going on with ya, big dog? And it is an amazing day for Yu-Gi-Oh! I hope your day has been going phenomenal. And if it isn't, don't let what happened at the beginning of your day ruin the rest of your day. As you may or may not know, I have videos dedicated to the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG Market Watch, cards that you should buy, cards that you should sell, and cards that you should avoid. Some cards that we have hit over recent times is Trap Eater. Boy, I've been hoarding ultra rare copies of Trap Eater for the longest. That card skyrocketing to $12 is in part of my ingenious prediction, y'all. And then telling you not to buy Destiny Hero Dasher, a card that has been confirmed inside of the GX box set, another one of my Magnifico El Genio. This is Perfecto Italiano, by the way. So today, I'm back at it again, talking about some cards that I'm going to be looking to be picking up because I have a strong feeling that these cards will skyrocket in price. Because of the new Yu-Gi-Oh! format and because COVID did cancel both of the YCS, there are some cards with Latin potential. Latin? Latent? I think it's latent potential. I need to stop making myself seem smart. There's some cards for Unga Bunga Cali. They go up in price real soon. Real soon. <laughs> and like usual, I will be revealing some cards that I strongly feel will skyrocket in price. So without further ado, let's start talking about them. Also, if you do plan on buying these cards, be sure to use my TCG player link. I left it down below in the description. It doesn't hurt you whatsoever and it helps me a ton. I think that it's a fair exchange. I'm giving you some really good information. All you have to do is just use the link. I strongly feel that Thunder Dragon Fusion is a card that players should be looking at. This card is already more than doubled in price since I've been watching it. Actually, it's more than quadrupled in price. I've been picking these cards up since they were a dollar. As Thunder Dragon Fusion is a fairly good card. It allows you to fusion summon for a Thunder Monster by using monsters in your banished pile or your graveyard. Can you say Prank Kid's Battle Butler who happens to be a fusion Thunder Monster for free? This card also allows you to banish itself from the graveyard to search a Thunder Monster from your deck to your hand. During the following turn, it wasn't sent to the graveyard. I genuinely feel that this is a card that could be at that $10 range, but that's only if there's a Thunder deck like Thunder Dragons or if Prank Kids become the top dominant strategy. Regardless, if you're an enthusiast to one of those strategies, you should definitely pick up your copy of Thunder Dragon Fusion before it goes up any higher. I do think that Thunder Fusion is at its plateau spot. It won't necessarily go any lower, but it's only bound to go higher if this deck catches fire, and you do not want to be on that side of the fence when the deck catches fire. Speaking of catching fire, there are two hand traps that are severely overlooked. They're being used in this competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! are considered some of the best, but are still extremely cheap. So I suggest new players or returning players get these while you can and don't take it for granted. Nibiru the Primal Being and Infinite Impermanence are very, very cheap Yu-Gi-Oh! cards right now. Granted, Nibiru is on its... Thurf reprint? Kali Unga Bunga, he can't count. Okay, so there's Secret, there's Gold, there's ulti, fourth reprint, it's on its fourth. Nibiru the Primal Being is on its fourth reprint from the Brothers of Legend set, making it a $10 card. This is considered one of the best hand traps in Yu-Gi-Oh! So if you are again a beginning or returning player or don't have these cards, you probably should pick them up right now. Infinite Impermanence is 100% on its millionth reprint. I'm pretty sure it has two secret rare reprints, two ultra rare reprints, a two gold rare reprints? I don't know. But right now this card is on its super rare reprint and that is also a $10 card. Both of these cards have been seeing significant play inside of the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG card game and uh, are cards you should 100% buy before they skyrocket in price. Speaking of such, for you starter players, there's actually another strategy or core you should be looking for. The Dogmatic Accord is insanely cheap compared to what it used to be. I mean, back in my day, it was pretty expensive. Nadir Servants were $70 each, Ecclesia was $20 each. That was what you needed to have a competitive Dogmatic Accord. Now, because of Mega 10's 2022, the deck is a lot cheaper. 
Only two copies of Nadir Servant this time around, but it's $10, and Dogmatica Ecclesia as low as $5 a copy. And while the Dogmatica package may only seem to be good inside of Shadal Invoked, the engine is actually something that can be splashed in a lot of future decks. Take for example the Fallen Albas archetype, which just so happens to get a structure deck this year, the Dogmatica strategy not only fits in there canically, it could fit in there, you know, uh, thematically and competitively. A card that I really think is just an amazing buy right now is Thanos' hand. That's not Thanos' hand? Well, it looks like it. Small World really does show what type of world this is. And for the people that are trying to still big brain figure out how to make this card work, basically you banish one monster in your hand, then you banish a monster from your deck that has one thing in common with the monster in your hand and nothing else, and then you add a monster from your deck to your hand that has one thing in common from the second monster banished, I, I didn't, I did not help, did I? Look, no matter how you put it, this sounds really bad on paper, but the card is phenomenal. On surface, Small World doesn't seem like an amazingly powerful card. You have to lose two cards out of your hand just to be able to search the card you need, but then you start to realize you get to search the exact card you need. Small World is not only a generic search card, it gets you almost any card inside of the Yu-Gi-Oh card game with the proper deck building. With cards like Pot of Desires being limited to one and Pot of Prosperity being extremely expensive, Small World is the budget alternative, kind of. Currently, Small Worlds are only $20. That's ridiculously cheap. And while I don't see Small World getting the cataclysmic Pot of Prosperity numbers, I do see it being a very, very small world as this card comes back to full circle, jumping up to about the $40 price tag that it once was. Now for the last card, or cards I actually have to talk to you about, I feel like these cards are genuinely cheap. I've been saying that Fluanda Reese is the best deck from Burst of Destiny, and while some people may say that that's a lie, it's not. Look, I know Sword Soul comes in the same set, but can Sword Soul kill two birds with one stone? Two? Maybe. Possibly. But when it comes to competitiveness and its price potential, Fluanderese is actually extremely cheap. The most expensive card, Flu Fluanderese, Flu Fluanderese, is Fluanderese Impen at $10. You only need one to two, and then your Fluanderese map card is only $5 each. This is really, really good for a fairly powerful deck. But I would be completely wrong to just talk about Fluanda Reese if we're talking about buying competitive strategies because Sword Soul is incredibly cheap compared to what it was when it first came out. Moyes are only $30, Sword Soul Emergence only $5, and Incredible Ecclesia, a card that can fit into just so many decks in Yu-Gi-Oh, is only $50. Okay, that might sound expensive, but it's a lot cheaper than what it was. Players have not been able to consistently play with these cards at high level events in person, meaning that the value of these cards have sunk in a little bit lower than I would personally feel. And that is all that I have for the cards that you should skyrocket. Actually, I saved two more cards for the people that didn't click off. I wanna talk about Lightning Storm and Red Reboot. I think that those cards have definitely hit their lowest point and you should be picking them up. But that's pretty much all that I have for today. If you are planning on buying these cards yourself, then make sure you use my TCG player link. It's down below in the description. It doesn't cost you anything and it helps me out as a content creator. Also, be sure to check out these videos as I'll catch you on the next one.